on this episode. I'm going to go ahead and admit it, he's cute. I meet a woman who found the grace to transform her life. It was kind of an accident, actually. I used to be a pretty famous drunk. So she could save the lives of some of God's cutest creatures. I'm assuming they, they bite? They bite and they claw. Hmm. I mean, they're scared, they're wild animals. There you go. Whether they like it or not. Oh, I'll hurt you over one of these. I believe it. I really will. It's got to be done. Not everyone we feature on this program lives conveniently near an airport. Sometimes we're forced to drive great distances to bring you the kind of quality television you've come to expect from a fake host like me. And when our travels take us to Texas, well, those distances can be quite distant indeed. Texas, of course, is an enormous state, but it's dotted with countless small towns. We're going to drive through all of them on our way to wherever we're going. We'll introduce you to a few as we go places like Spur. You know you're in Spur, Texas when you see the big giant Spur that was built to celebrate the town's centennial back in 2009. It's impossible to miss. What can I tell you about Spur? Well, the movie Urban Cowboy, which you'll surely recall starring John Travolta, who played one Bud Davis, reportedly was from Spur in the movie. Interestingly, and perhaps no coincidence, the screenwriter for that film, Aaron Latham, really was from Spur. Dickens, Texas, population 286. Founded back in 1891, Dickens peaked out in 1927 with a population of 500. Interesting fact, Dickens, Texas is the unofficial wild boar capital of Texas, begging the obvious question, what is the official wild boar capital? No one knows. The somebody we're here to meet lives in yet another small Texas town. About 100 miles south of Amarillo, in the wide open expanse of the Texas Panhandle, there's a little town that's struggling with the dwindling population problem. It's not the human residents that are disappearing, but a smaller, furrier inhabitant of the land, the black-tailed prairie dog. Seen as a nuisance to most landowners, these little critters have been driven to near extinction. Which brings us to Linda Watson, whose mission is to relocate them to a more hospitable location. Which begs the question, why would someone go out of their way to protect a rodent? So we're here. And where exactly is here, Don? Kitty Quay, Texas. Caprock Canyon State Park. Kitty Quay, is that how you pronounce it? Kitty Quay. Who am I standing next to here? This is Linda Watson. She is our prairie dog lady. Let me start with your shirt. PMS Recycled Vermin? Yes. What's that mean? Well, PMS is because I'm the only girl that does this and I have a little bit of an attitude at times. And Recycled vermin is what we do. All right, good. That's a baby prairie dog? This is one of our orphans. May I? You certainly may. I'm going to go ahead and admit it. He's cute. Yeah. How long have you been working with Linda? Uh, about four years now. Three yeah, or four years. I think so. Yeah. And what brought you to this particular facility? I have been fighting for most of my adult life to get prairie dogs returned to protected lands, state and federal lands. Why? because they're running out of habitat and they're a very important creature. They're just such a keystone species in, in the mean? ecosystem. Without prairie dogs, you really cannot have a healthy prairie. That's an important point. A keystone species is one that's critical to the well-being of other animals in the ecosystem. A healthy prairie dog habitat benefits the survival of about 150 other species. Can you tell me what's going to happen to us today? Well, what we're doing is locating habitat where they'll be safe, hopefully, forever. Mm -hmm. And that's this park. You have prairie dogs in the back of the truck? We, have, we have prairie dogs in the back of the truck. Uh huh. First thing we have to do is we have to go build a prairie dog town. You can't just take the prairie dogs and throw them out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. right. Let's go build a prairie dog town. We have now entered right. Linda's world. So get, How do you know when you're in Linda's world? Linda tells you. Okay, camera people, when I start moving these cages, do not get near me. Mike and I will move them. Everybody else just stay back. Okay. That's what we do. In a little while, it'll be highly amusing because Mike and I will get these out of the cages, at which point paybacks come because they're going to try very hard to hurt us. And how do they, I'm assuming they, they bite? They bite and they claw. Hmm. I mean, they're scared. They're wild animals. So, and that's, to me, more important than you guys. So. I believe her. Oh, well, I'll hurt you over one of these. I believe it. I really will. Better believe it. At this point, 
it's every man for himself. So I'm at Caprock Canyon State Park, helping Linda Watson find new homes for a few dozen prairie dogs. First order of business is to get these guys to where they're not banging themselves up. What's the Latin name? Sinomus ludovicianus. Sinomus ludovicianus? Oh, well, we've already upset one. Why did I do no, that? No, actually, I think this one's yelling from our cage. That's what I think. I like this right here, pretty open. Linda's more than just a protector and relocator for these prairie dogs. She's also something of a nurse. What, what is it primarily that you're, that you're checking for disease-wise? The number one disease that's of concern is bubonic plague. The Black Death? Which is really not all that dangerous to people. <laughs> If the, good Lord, if the good Lord gave me a list of 10 horrible diseases and said you're gonna have one tomorrow, I'd jump all over plague. Plague in human beings is cured by oral antibiotics. Oh, well sure, in modern times. And you have to get chewed on by fleas. Right, because it wasn't really the rats that caused the plague. It was, it was the, the fleas. fleas. Yeah. In other words, if, if a prairie dog had the plague and I were to capture it, the first thing we do when we capture the prairie dog is dip it thoroughly for fleas. Mm -hmm. If the prairie dog wants to sleep with me or anything like that at that point, I can't get the plague from it. You can only get it from the fleet. Have you slept with a prairie dog before? I've slept with prairie dogs for 30 years. I've always got a pet prairie dog and it just curls up on my shoulder and down. Are you just making things up, Linda? Nope, nope. <laughs> well, I'd love to dig deeper into Linda's proclivity to keep prairie dogs as pets. We need to get these currently caged critters out of the sun and settled into their new subterranean homes. But before we can do that, we'll need to actually build them. So the trick here is we want to get the dirt out and try not to open, you know, in such a way we've got to keep that fairly, right. fairly upright. How deep does it go? Uh, it's about three, three and a half feet. Like you that. probably dug a few of these. One or two. Linda's not making permanent homes here, just a place where prairie dogs can get used to their new surroundings. How do you know when you're deep enough? Oh, uh, you'll hit solid. I think I did. Once they get used to these small reinforced holes, they'll venture off on their own, dig their own burrows. Something like that? All right, you guys, come on. Did, did, did uh -huh. Don do something wrong? See? See how we're high here and low here? I do. Yeah. Yeah, Don, that you, that little Don guy told me it was perfect. Don said it was perfect. Way Don to said go, it's Don. perfect, Mike. Don't change the thing. Can't get good help. That's what I got to put up with. I'm getting an idea. Did you go to school? I am a ninth grade graduate. So how does a high school dropout become a preeminent prairie dog expert? You feed a Texan line of BS, and if you can back it up, you have a business. <laughs> Look, that's why we're here. Now, if you're going to house prairie dogs, you've also got to feed them. That task has been delegated to a volunteer named Whitney. Let me ask you about the scoop. Why wouldn't you just take a handful of it? And... Because you know how much you're putting in the scoop, not how much you're putting in your hand. I'm not convinced. Make sure there's enough for four cages. Yes. I'm just taking direction from Whitney at this point. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. You're putting it in with your hands. And she specifically said you use the scoop. But I felt like she was doing it just because she had been told to do it and never bothered to question authority. Whitney is in charge of the feeding operation. And you're in charge of Whitney? True. Who's in charge of her? God. OK, so it goes God, Linda, Whitney, me. Yes. OK. How many volunteers are here, Whitney? Not many. All my friends I know probably wouldn't do this. Why? Linda's personality. <laughs> it's possible she can hear you. <laughs> a lot of my friends are scared of her. <laughs> can I be honest with you? I'm a little scared of her. That's plenty, guys. All right. OK, this is the most important part of this whole procedure. She was saying you're a dream to work for. She's a child. <laughs> she doesn't know any better. We're all children in God's eyes, Linda. All right, so we dug the holes, placed food in their cages. Now we're stuffing them with hay and talking about our dreams. Yes, I had a dream where my landlord uh -huh. was following me around doing this all day, and he was made out of particle board, and he was nude. That's not a scary dream, but very disturbing. I'm a little That's scared. Just, since I quit drinking, sleep is an issue at times. It was hard work and God's grace that allowed Linda to get sober. 
Luckily for the prairie dogs, she refocused her energy on the preservation of their species. All right, come on, grab that. We got work to do. I'm in the Texas Panhandle with prairie dog lady, Linda Watson, who has dedicated her sobriety to keeping these cute rodents off the endangered species list. Today, I get to help. But remember, this is Linda's world, and she has a few rules, Okay. naturally. Now, we're gonna cease the humor for a moment. Let me think about the next step. You need to pick a cameraman, because if everybody is surrounding us, these prairie dogs are gonna go insane. Pick a cameraman. I mean, you can have all the people out here you want, but if you want one right there with me, it can only be one. There can be only one. one. Camera. Right here. Yeah, you, you. there's one. Right. I'm Doug. Come with me. Hi, nice Doug. Meet you. All right, come Careful, with Doug. Me. She'll pull your arm out and beat you over the head with it. Now, if we make a ring around this cage, this prairie dog doesn't have a direction to get away from us. So two of you can be anywhere here, but you can't be there. Okay. If we've learned anything about Linda Watson, it's that prairie dogs come first, and she is not about to wait around for some camera crew. In this regard, Linda Watson is my personal hero. All right, you guys ready? Because I'm fixing to move dogs now. This is, this is happening now, guys. All right, you're in charge of two things. Guarding this door. Yeah. And when I hold it up, I want you to spray its little butt area, about two squirtsies with that. And, and to be you, clear, this is just perfume, it's basically. It's just cheap it's, it's anything. Bad. It's just something to make them not smell like oh. food. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, back up, back up, back up. I'll bring him all the way out oh, to yeah. you. Okay. Now, right on his butt. Just, just, just back here. Okay, now hold your hand on the cage so yep. you can't get Throw out. the door. That rodent is peeved. Why is he so angry? Well, because I'm holding him up by his tail and you're spraying course. cheap perfume on him. Now I'm going to hold this all the way up and then you spray, okay? Right. Now that we've started, there's really no turning back. Yes. This one will really hurt you. Um, some of them just have bad tempers. How many times have you been bit, by the way? And does it hurt Hundreds. a lot? Hundreds, oh yeah. Whoa, whoa. Easy there. Yay! I'd say it's time for anger management or something. Crazy job, Don. That's why I'm over here. Spray. What an unusual thing to do. Squirt and cheap cologne on a prairie dog while filming the You're entire process. You're the only process. human being on the planet doing that at this time. Well, that's something. There you go. All right, spray, quick. We got another nut one. Got it? Yeah. Would you like to try to get one out of the cage? Yes, I would. All right. You can see how easy it is to get bit. These guys are cute, but fast. There you go. One, two, three, ready, go. Okay. There you go. Ooh. Go. Banzai. I believe that is probably the most aggressive cage full of prairie dogs I have ever put in a cage. Prairie dog relocator. It's got to be done. All right, so they got okay. shade. Right. They, got, they got companionship. Yes. They got a hole. And in, and in just a little while, we're going to decorate the town with American flags. I told you it was going to get weird. Yes, the woman who figured out that cheap perfume will keep predators away from prairie dogs has also come up with a creative way to make a festive safe house for these critters. What we're doing is we're building a fence around this town of bad smells. Right. It's pretty simple, really. A bucket of pine-scented cleaner, a bunch of small American flags, oh, and the garland, is actually to keep the prairie dogs from wandering off into the overgrown areas of the park. You can't be the only one doing this, are you? Yep. You're it? I meant for someone with my education and my background to leave something that maybe will last hundreds of years is pretty cool. It's very cool. Much like Charles Goodnight before her, Linda is helping to protect the species for the betterment of the animal and the land. And the job's not over yet. All right, guys, load them up. So now we go catch more prairie dogs so that in two weeks we do this all over again. With the idea, we're going to go capture some prairie dogs 
put them in the quarantine area so you can see what that looks like. Maybe decorate a Christmas tree or something. Maybe carve out a pumpkin. Hide some Easter eggs. We're in Kitty Coy, Texas, where we've joined Linda Watson's ongoing crusade to protect the prairie dog. Now we're in the process of actually looking for and uh, and capturing That's the uh, prairie dogs. If I didn't introduce Daryl before, this is this is Mr. Linda, basically. Hello. All right, so what should I need to know about what's going to happen? What we're going to do here is this is a thinning process. We've got to remove about 70% of the prairie dogs from this campground over the course of this summer. And then, then they'll go into quarantine and then we'll bring them back just like we did the ones we, we brought this morning and we'll release them in the new, new site. What we don't want to have happen is for this campground to, to get grazed down to bare dirt. Right. They are not on a prairie, therefore they can't spread. And so, you know, food could become an issue. And that's, people say that the prairie dogs graze everything down to bare dirt and they damage the terrain. What you're gonna see out here is a very healthy, grassy area with many, many prairie dogs and the grass is thriving. But of course, if you continue to let them overpopulate, well, then that will become a problem. So we're keeping them in check. This is where we go? This is where we're gonna get our lesson in how to catch a prairie dog. All right, Daryl. Without a Keep prairie an eye dog. On us. I will. Somebody, somebody starts screaming, you start acting. You be on Okay. All right, so rather than argue with you, what I'll just right. do is everything you tell me to there do. There you go. Will you be catching the first one or will I? No, I'll be catching the first one. Okay. And you will observe the process. Right. You are the tight end, I am the quarterback. You're very kind. Thank you. Let's go. Come on, we're leaving now. All right, all right. After years of trial and error, Linda has perfected her technique. First, spot the prairie dog. Just creep up to it. Get it. Get it now. Yep. Yep. Then, jump out of a moving truck. Hop out, Mike. Come on. Then, quietly move the water tank into position. Once it's over the hole, open a spigot and flood the prairie dog's home. And man, if you're the prairie dog right now, you're thinking, what? What the heck? Not to worry, the prairie dog has adapted to the common flooding that hits these plains and can hold his breath until he safely evacuates. Oh, here we go. An instinct that Linda is more than willing to take advantage of. <laughs> How'd you know he was coming? I'm good at this. Fortunately for the prairie dogs, Linda is indeed very good at this. See those two right there, Daryl? Look at my finger. Cut for the nest now. In other places, prairie dogs are considered a pest and exterminated. Back them up, baby. But in these parts, Linda can sometimes rescue a hundred prairie dogs a day. Here, just pop them right in here, Mike. I know that had to be very disruptive. Go. Here we go. Hold. He still got suds on his face. You don't want to put him in there with suds on his face. His buddies are just going to make fun of him. So that was a very successful run. You nailed yeah. the whole family. Yeah. Soon, I'm hoping you will catch some. That way, you can get bitten instead of one. Now it's true, I have stuck my hand in many places over the years. Don't get bit, protect the quarterback. And yes, this is another one. If you'd prefer to grab right hand, it'd just come around this side. I'll grab left hand. Every time I do that, I get bitten, but you go for oh, it. Come on. But soon enough, we're catching prairie dogs hand over fist. Easy, buddy. Oh, jeez. Go. That's all right. Get him by the tail before he bites you. Got him. And there's another one. Oh, God. <laughs> A surfeit of riches. Our cage is brimming with rescued prairie dogs, and the day is quickly coming to an end. What's my big takeaway? Oh, he's a big boy. Yeah. Prairie dog relocating. It's just doggone fun. <laughs> Look at that. Looks All right, like he's Mr. Doing tight end. It. Hello, prairie dogs. Well done, Mike. I want you to join me for an official goodbye. I want to thank ah. you for your hospitality. Well, I would thank you for your help. This is interesting to find that you would think this was fun. How is fun. How man. do you not look at this and see nothing but fun, man? This is fun. You're pulling them out of the ground with your bare hands. You're relocating them. You're rejuvenating and reinvigorating the prairie in a very important part of Texas. And at the same time, yeah. saving the lives of a uh, of the species I can't, I can't recall. What do you call them again? Sinomus ludovicianus. Sinomus ludovicianus. Something to remember. Black-tailed prairie dogs. Thank you. I do You're want welcome. one of those shirts, though, for real. 
Um, this may be the last one in existence. Sure, it. it's like 30 years. Okay, I'll take well, you it. can have it. Let's swap right now. <laughs>